Hello, this is Chris. And if you'd like to understand how to grow your business without so much anxiety in a really powerful way, please stick around because I'm going to share with you how to avoid eight painful and costly mistakes that keep most women in business completely stuck. Stick with me. Hello, this is Chris. Welcome to perfectmothers.com, a place for women entrepreneurs who are committed to scaling their business without drama, without overwhelm, and without anxiety. So if you're someone, if you're a woman entrepreneur who really wants to push your business, but you don't want to work harder, you want to work smarter, if you want to find practical ways for you to stay in your zone of genius, to do more strategic work instead of tactical work, this is a place for you. So today I'm gonna to be sharing with you how to avoid eight painful and costly mistakes that keep most people stuck in communication. Now, I wanna start by sharing that in my view of business, communication is one of the biggest challenges for humanity, let alone for business. But in business specifically, it's one of the things that can really cost you millions of dollars, can cost you employees, can cost you contracts, and can cost you a lot of things in terms of what you really, really wanna have. And I wanna start by sharing that one of the biggest mistakes, mistake number one that people do when it comes to communication is failing to have a clear outcome of what they really want to happen, right? What do you want to happen out of this conversation, out of this encounter? And there's two practical ways to do it. Number one, recognizing how do I feel? <laughs> this is super important because just recognizing that is gonna put that up front and it's gonna make you more aware of how you communicate your message and I'll get more to that later. So ask yourself the question, when you have to have a difficult conversation, how do I feel? It could be frustration, it could be anger, resentment, most likely it's not gonna be joy and happiness. So you need to be aware of this. Why? Because when you communicate your message, you're gonna want to keep that in check so your message goes through and it's actually powerful. So failing to have a clear outcome, right? Once you recognize your feeling, write down what do you want to happen as a result of what you're about to do? Do you want the other person to change a behavior? Do you want the person to just understand what, where you're coming from? What are the specific things that have to happen as a result of that conversation? Write it down and say it out loud. It sounds a little simplistic and maybe like too much, Chris, do you really want me to say it out loud? Yes, please say it out loud because it's gonna sink it in your brain that that's what you're after. That's your target and there's many ways to get there, but if you know what you want, it's gonna be much easier for you to get that. Failing to have your outcome would be similar to you stepping into a scavenger hunt that someone put there for you without your first clue, without any rules, without a map. You probably wouldn't do that. So in business, most people that engage, and by the way, this is something that happens all the time, also in personal communication, right? How many times do you really think, today I'm gonna see a friend, I'm gonna hang out with a friend, right? You can say, I'm gonna make my friend feel like a million dollars, or when my friend to whatever it is that you want her to experience or him to experience. And the same thing with your employees, the same thing with your team members, the same thing with your partners, business partners or clients. What is the specific thing that you want to happen? So mistake number two is failing to recognize the nonverbal cues that the other human being has. Now, it's important to recognize that most of communication doesn't happen verbally. We listen to words, but we react most intensely with the way those words are said and physically how that is communicated. So if you can see someone, I always prefer, if you need to have a difficult conversation, right to have it on the phone, it's a lot easier to use habit face-to-face, -face, FaceTime, uh, Skype, whatever it is that you can get your hands on, like Zoom, please do that so you can guide yourself with what the other person is doing. Now, why is this important? because oftentimes people are in their own minds and they're not seeing what the other person is communicating on verbal. They could be agreeing with you verbally, but physically they're showing disrespect or they're showing anger or uh, resentment or confusion or whatever it is. And you need to be able to have the energy and the uh, clarity to be able to step in and say, hey, I noticed that you s seem confused. Is there something that I'm not communicating properly? Or when I said X, Y, and C, you seem upset. Is that what's going on? And people are oftentimes not used to be calling out on their bullshit, but if you do it with love, if you do it with compassion, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to keep directing that message, right? Mistake number three, <laughs> failing to actively listen. <laughs> Listening is one of the biggest challenges in communication. I would say that maybe 50% of all the problems in the world would change if people were actively listening. So what does this mean? We talked about staying in your head and how that is ineffective for communication. It's ineffective because you don't get to not just see the verbal cues, but also recognize what the person is really trying to say. And oftentimes when someone is saying something, we are seeing it, we can't help but see it through our own lens. 
So what does this mean? It means that when someone is saying something to you, you can make a few stops and clarify. Okay, if I'm hearing you correctly, X, Y, and Z are making you feel confused, are making you feel in like um, unempowered or whatever it is. And these in turn, and your main obstacles are A, B, and C, right? Just clarify what those obstacles are. And sometimes people will not say yes, which is what you want in a conversation anyway, people to be agreeing with you in a way for there to be some form of connection. And you want to clarify people like, no, that's not at all what I meant to say. What I meant to say was this. And then you can clarify those things and that's super important. Mistake number four, failing to check in the way that you yourself are non-verbally communicating to others. This is so important. And we talked about step number one before even recognizing what your outcome was, was to really step and think about what is the feeling that I'm having? By the way, shitty is not a feeling. <laughs> Overwhelmed, tired, whatever it is, like recognizing that feeling because that is most likely what you're gonna tend to go to in that conversation. So, a couple of things to avoid that mistake. Before you have a conversation, connect with your heart, take a deep breath, S like sense, like get into gratitude and just really get in the present moment. And number two, when you have that conversation with someone and uh, it's important to just think of yourself, if you were, imagine that you were seeing the scene of that movie that is being played in front of you and you didn't have any volume and you were looking at yourself, what would your nonverbal cues communicate about the message that you wanted to give? And sometimes it's hard to even think about it in those terms, but if you think about what would you look like if you were just gesturing, if you were just moving your body, and oftentimes that is contradictory and incongruent with the message that you want to communicate. So you want to keep that in check. Take a deep breath and recognize, am I, do I look upset? Do I sound upset? Am I, if I'm happy, am I smiling? Uh, am I closing my body to, to make the other person feel unwelcome? Something that you might be able to think about when you're communicating with someone is would you ever in your right mind direct traffic with a stop sign and then ask cars to come through, right? people would be super confused and they would probably look at the stop sign more than your gesture. People wouldn't know what to do. And oftentimes, you wanna think in those terms as to how you're showing up for others. Now let's talk about mistake number five. Mistake number five is failing to communicate precisely and exactly what you want the other person to do. And this is really important because you can do steps number one and one through four and if you're not telling someone exactly in very, very specific terms what you want them to do, they're gonna fail and you're gonna set them up for failure. So what do I mean by this? Oftentimes people come up with these generic BS words that mean something to them but are so ambiguous to the other person that they can only interpret it in their own world with their own vision, with their own lens, right? So saying to someone like, what I really need to do is I need to be more proactive or I need to step it up, right? It doesn't mean jack squat. So what you want to do is to think about Instead of saying to someone the generic term of what you want them to do, think about what are some specific ways that if this human being was showing up with more, being more proactive or stepping it up, what would that look like? And give them those two or three specific things that you want them to do. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to show up to the office 30 minutes before everyone comes in when we have a meeting because you need to prepare all these different things. Or when we have this type of situation, what I need to do is one, two, three, and four different things, right? And that allows them to recognize, okay, now this is something doable. Otherwise, it's very hard for you to even measure that. Sometimes people have a gut feeling of what they want the other person to do, and it's really hard for the other person, and sometimes even hard for yourself, because you yourself don't know what the hell that means. Maybe you have an ambiguous idea in your mind, but you're not being clear, and when you're not being clear, then it's gonna be super hard for the other person to do it. Mistake number six that you want to avoid. Sometimes, often in business, there are consequences that need to take place if the other party doesn't follow up, if they don't do what they need to do, right? Because situations that have been going on for several months or several years, in some cases, right, need to be addressed. And one of the most difficult things to recognize is that you can do everything that you can do, but you cannot make the other party or the other person do something different. So when needed, to have clear, specific uh, boundaries of, if this doesn't happen, then what I'm going to do, it's always you, right? What I'm gonna do is one, two, three, and four different things, or one different thing. And that puts the other person in a different place where because they can recognize that there's a clear consequence if they don't follow up. Also, it's more fair to them so that they know 
what you're really going to do. Because sometimes people just say, oh my God, I was blindsided. They weren't blindsided because this situation might have been going on for a long time. But if you don't tell them what you're planning on doing when it's pertinent, then you're also setting them up for failure. Mistake number seven that you want to avoid is failing to consistently and proactively follow up on the things that you both agreed you were going to do. So what are the specific next steps? What are we going to do? When are we going to check in? What are the things that have to happen if this is a one month plan? Okay, let's not just wait till one month goes by before we can actually recognize that this isn't working. By week number one, I'm going to need these things. By week number two, these things. Or if it's less than a week, if it's pertinent, like what are the things that need to happen by Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday? Right? And by doing this, you're uh, setting up a plan for success for both of you where you both can check in and you both know if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. And last but not least, uh, one of the biggest mistakes that people do once they have gone through steps one through seven is that they fail to follow up with praise when it's needed, right? People will do far more to feel connected, to feel loved, to feel like they're part of something. And when you are depositing these emotional golden coins in their bank account, they're going to want to do more of that. And the more that you go out of your way, but go out of your way in the language that they want to receive it in, right? Some people want to be praised in public. Some people want to be praised in private. Some people love emails. Some people hate emails. Some people like written notes, right? Some people want to be touched and say, hey, you're doing a great job. Whatever it is for them, I want to recognize what their love language is for receiving praise and do it in that specific way. So let's recap. Number one is understanding what your outcome is. Really getting deep into what is the emotion that you're feeling so you're aware of it and what specifically needs to happen. Write it down and say it out loud. Number two, being aware, having the sensory acuity to know when the other person's nonverbal cues are changing so you can direct your message that way and you can also confront things if they need to be addressed. Number three, failure to listen actively. So you need to listen actively, you need to uh, be present stop wanting to tell them what you want to tell them just really listen to what they're saying and then clarify if what you're listening is correct because sometimes it's not going to be correct number four checking in yourself what are some of those non-verbal cues that you want to communicate so you can step up that way and if you're not communicating that way like check in and change that because the way that you move your body the way that you gesture is going to be far more powerful than the words that you're saying. Number five, failing to ask for what you specifically want in a way that actually makes sense that can be measured. Don't ask for generic terms, don't ask for uh, being more proactive, being nicer, being kinder. Think about what are some of the ways that if they stepped up to that level, what would that mean specifically? And then ask for those things. It's a lot easier for both of you to measure if you're doing that right or not. Number six, failing to uh, establish appropriate consequences when needed with a specific time frame. If this doesn't happen by this specific date, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. And say it out loud, say it up front so there's no surprises and people are not blindsided, if you will. Number seven, failing to follow up and understand how things are going in a time frame that you both have agreed. If it's one month, if it's one week, what are the specific steps that need to take place for both of you to feel comfortable that things are progressing? And last but not least, number eight, uh, failing to praise the other person in their love language, in the language that they prefer when they are doing things right. If you find yourself nodding and saying yes, if this makes a lot of sense to you, I'm going to ask you to do three things. Please like this video, the little thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. You may also want to turn the bell notification so you can get notified when I have a brand new video. Number two, if you know of someone that might benefit from this, please share it with them. And third and most importantly, if you would like to have some real practical hands-on help to your business, if you've been stuck for a while, if you're tired to, uh, of, of staying stuck in second year or you feel like you're running inside a hamster wheel and you haven't been able to change this approach on your own, I would love to be able to help you. There's a link underneath this description that will allow you to connect with me and we might explore if we are a good fit to work together. There's a second link below the description where you can click and also check out some of the amazing case studies that I've had with entrepreneurs from around the world who are thriving, who are scaling their business without drama and who are kicking butt in their own field and working smart and not harder from their zone of genius. So I thank you for watching this. I send you all my love from Austin.